It's, uh, it's Ethan. Oh, hey. You all right? You just disappeared the other night. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. It's Mia. She's not dead. She's alive. She, she's back. They found her? How? What happened? I don't know. Look, I, I don't know how, but she's back. She's back somehow. And maybe it's a prank. She wants me to come and get her. Where is she? Dolphin. Dolphin, Louisiana. Dude, it's been three years. I know, I know, but what if it is her? I have to find out what happened. The 24th of January Resident Evil 7 was released for the Xbox One, PS4 and PC. After much hype and the opportunity to play it in VR for the PlayStation, the critics and fans welcomed it with open arms, and the game has been received very positively. Capcom felt it was time to take the series in a different direction, and finally listened to the fans of the franchise and returned it to its survival horror roots, due to the very lukewarm reception of Resident Evil 6, which went too far with the action and felt like a departure from what made the series so popular. To be honest, this series had been shifting from its survival horror roots for some time. Now the game is thankfully a continuation of the series, but only hints at the past and strives to tell an original storyline that ignores the characters of the previous games, such as Leon, Wesker and Jill Valentine. Capcom could have easily gone the route of rebooting the franchise. After six entries, they may have felt the story had run its course. Thankfully, they had more ideas to bring to the table. Set in 2017, you play as Ethan Winters, who was drawn to Louisiana by a video message from his wife Mia. Who has been missing for three years. Ethan arrives to find a seemingly abandoned house. You as Ethan find your way in and locate Mia locked up. You free her and attempt to escape but you realise she is possessed and she quickly attacks you. You are forced to kill her and now need to escape. After receiving a call from a woman named Zoe offering her assistance, Mia returns with a chainsaw and hacks your hand off. You awaken at a dinner table of the Baker family with your hand sewn back on. Ethan is held captive by Jack, the head of the household, joined with his wife Margarita, their son Lucas and an elderly wheelchair-bound woman who appears to be dead. Ethan manages to escape and is contacted again by Zoe, who reveals she is the daughter of the family. Jack has noticed you have escaped and begins to hunt you down. You realise he can't be killed in the usual fashion as he has the ability to regenerate from fatal wounds. You have to figure out how to kill him and escape from the house with your limbs and sanity intact. Now, when they announced Resident Evil 7 would be moving away from the third person perspective to a first person POV style game, I was a little hesitant about the change. I wasn't overly keen. Going with POV was a big change. Resident Evil 6 relied too much on action and FPS is an oversubscribed genre. With action being a strong aspect of the previous entries and this new direction, I felt Capcom may be leading the series down the wrong path. It took me a while to even give the demo a go. I wasn't that enthusiastic, but my good friend Richard, who joins me on my commentary podcasts, encouraged me to give it a go because he highly recommended it and him and I both share a similar passion for the series. So I tried it and was very impressed. So I immediately pre-ordered the game, which I rarely do. I tend to wait for games to drop in price. I only grab games on release date if I intend to review it, or I really want to play it on my downtime, such as, say, Gears of War 4. What makes Resident Evil 7 so enjoyable for me is its return to the survival horror adventure. Action is not its main focus, but it does become a stronger element as you progress further into the game. But it's not as excessive as we've seen before with the long-running franchise. It's very much in the same vein as Alien Isolation, but less difficult. It's not a first-person shooter in a traditional sense. It's not all about the kill count and getting the largest weapons possible. It dials back the speed and wants you to soak up the atmosphere and the horror of what's happening and what's going to happen. The incorporation of puzzles makes for a welcome return. They aren't overly complicated, but do require some thought to complete them and don't feel so lazily implemented like Resident Evil 4 and 5. I completed the game in about 8 hours, and I did spend a lot of my time looking at every item throughout, and I still missed many of the pickups, so it should theoretically take you about 8-9 to nine hours to complete, even if you do take your time. The previous ones did run to a similar length, 
but you can easily run through them once you know the puzzles and what direction to go. There is always someone online who can breeze through it in two hours by just using a knife. The graphics are very impressive in areas and just above average in others. The opening video of Mia looks a bit last gen, but when you see the long shot of Ethan travelling in his car, the graphics are incredible and look practically lifelike. The use of lighting and the texture details is to a very high standard, but it wasn't a game that left me blown away, apart from the odd sequence. But overall the graphics were solid, and I didn't see a dip in the frame rate throughout on the Xbox. Resident Evil 7 does borrow many horror elements from classic films, such as Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which has a strong influence with the use of the family and their eating habits. The little girl Evelyn takes cues from 90s Japanese horror cinema, and even films such as Alien Resurrection and 90s action schlock Deep Rising appear to have an influence in the later part of the game. It's a great combination of different horror styles that made for a fun and varied experience. Having only played the Xbox One version, I haven't experienced it in VR, and I know from the reactions I've seen makes it a more terrifying experience, but I'm not sure I can play the whole game like that. I can get motion sickness from time to time, having recently got Dead Rising 4, I really want to finish it, but I can only play it in short bursts, because it makes me feel sick, which is odd because the other games didn't do that. I also get migraines from time to time, so using VR for an extended period wouldn't be wise for me. But don't worry if you don't own VR, the game plays perfectly without it, and it wasn't designed with that as a main method of play. The game is genuinely scary and employs a lot of jump scares, which is a cheap technique used in the medium of film, but it does honestly keep you on edge throughout. I know some people don't find much enjoyment out of being scared every five minutes, especially when playing a game. I sometimes do feel it can suck the enjoyment out of a game if you intend to play something to relax, and then suddenly you spend the next few hours getting stressed out. But you've paid to play Resident Evil, and being scared is part of the experience, and most of the time I get a lot of fun out of it. The game pretty much front loads the game with most of the scares, and dials it back as you progress further. You only feel comfortable when you're in a safe room, or when you are loaded up with a powerful weapon and full on health. However, especially on your first playthrough, you spend large chunks of the game low on health and ammo, and have to resort to running away. The soundtrack for the game sadly is not as memorable as the previous entries, it's more of a twisted version of the familiar style to what we've heard before. It often keeps it very minimal, and relies on the sound effects to keep you tense and worried about what's going to pop round the corner. The music becomes a bit more bombastic in the third act of the game, but nothing really stood out to me and made me think that's some classic Resident Evil music. The voiceover talent however does a fine job selling the characters and the story. The whole sound mix is very cinematic, so well done to the sound team. The monsters you encounter are not entirely original, it's stuff you've kind of seen before. So there is a continuity, but sadly no zombies. Which is a shame, but the boss fights do provide something fresh and interesting, so I have to give them props for that. The controls do feel a bit clunky or say sluggish. Your character walks at a very slow pace and runs at the speed of a pensioner, which can be stressful when running away from the monsters. The corridors are tighter in the house, making it difficult to give the monsters the run around like the other games, so you have to resort to using your ammunition. Your character is not an expert in using weapons, so his aim is not fantastic, which does play up the realistic aspects of it, but also hinders the action in some places, and you can accidentally burn through ammunition which isn't that readily available. There has been some minor changes to what you pick up, for example you get these chemical fluid packs, which can be mixed with a green herb to increase your health to max capacity, or even create more ammunition. In some cases new bullets can be created to do more damage. The knife attack is probably the best it's ever been, finally you feel you can do some decent amounts of damage, thanks to being able to swipe pretty quickly. In the past it was always a slow process to stab or slice your enemies. Once you complete the game there isn't much to encourage you to come back to it, there are two endings, basically you are given a choice on how to finish the story, but I do feel compelled to return to it and see if I can complete it in a quicker runtime, which is something I like to do with Resident Evil. I always like to see what I can unlock in a faster completion time. The game is a solid 8 out of 10, it's a welcome return to what made me love the franchise back in the 90s. It has a few little things that stop it from getting a higher score, but definitely get hold of it when you can. 
and if you can handle the jump scares, play it on a big screen with surround sound, or if you have the balls to play it in VR for the full terrifying experience. If you enjoyed the video, you can find more on my YouTube channel, and also you can follow me on Twitter. If you want to help support the channel, you can donate through Patreon and receive monthly perks such as updates on the latest news on my channel, early access to reviews and commentaries before they go live on YouTube. Even the smallest donation can help keep this channel going. Thank you.